Today we are going to work with assertions in Cypress. So one of the most useful and one of the most important feature of any automation testing tool is asserting the operation that we are performing. It can be anything. It can be asserting the UI validation, it can be asserting the response validation, or it can be asserting anything that you are performing within the application and you can get the output only if you do the assertions in the testing world. So in order for that to be done, Cypress bundles the popular Chai assertion library as well as some helpful extensions for Synon and jQuery, bringing you dozens of powerful assertions for free. So basically, all the different assertion libraries that is required for any JavaScript-based applications or JavaScript-based automation testing tool, like in my other course in Udemy as well as in YouTube, Protractor, we used to have these kind of libraries like Mocha and Chai within this assertion library for uh, asserting the application or the test that we are writing. But in here, for Cypress, everything is there within the extensions of the Cypress, Cypress itself. So anytime that you install Cypress, everything is there for you. Well, as that said, there are two types of waiting mechanism available within Cypress. One is the implicit assertion and another one is the explicit assertion. So I have clearly mentioned that there are two types of waiting mechanisms available in Cypress along with assertions. So what does this waiting mechanism mean? So as you can see there are two types of assertion like implicit and explicit but still this implicit and explicit assertions work in conjunction sometime maybe many time and they automatically have the waiting mechanism of Cypress which is available for any command within the API of Cypress. For instance, the visit automatically waits. Similarly, click waits, type wait. So any operation that you do, Cypress will wait for the operation to be successfully completed for a certain period of time. And if you want, or maybe if you think that there is a huge number of waiting period, then you can probably extend that as well using the timeout property. And again, these are some of the things that you can do within Cypress and these assertion libraries by itself are built with this waiting mechanism, which is really, really cool. So Cypress has the built-in retry ability in almost every command and especially the wait mechanism in assertions are really, really handy. So for instance, if you're going to perform an implicit wait, which is nothing but using the should, you can see that we can perform by getting an element and then we can specify a timeout property which is nothing but the timeout option for the get method. And then we can call the should, and you can see that I'm doing a have dot class, and then I'm verifying if this class exists. So probably what I'm trying to do here is, I'm just gonna wait for this slider property, and I'm verifying if this slider two appears, and it has the class as ls nav active. So only if it is, then tell me that it is passed. If not, just throw me an error. Something like that. So these are many times the cases like in our applications we will have this spinner loading icon and we have to wait till the loading icon disappears. It's exactly the same thing in here but rather just waiting we are also doing an assertion here to see if that particular class appears during runtime. So you can see even this particular class doesn't really exist on the UI but it verifies if this particular option exists using this timeout and this retry mechanism is inbuilt within this particular assertion library which is really really cool and that's exactly the same syntax for the explicit wait as well as you can see we have used a conjunction of should along with the expect here so as you can see it's the same syntax but just that within the should i'm trying to use the expect to have class this one so it's like an elaborate way of writing the code, right? So you can write the code in a more elaborate way. So you can do a different way of asserting. So because should, you cannot just have multiple ways of asserting it. You can have should have dot class. And if you want to chain again, probably that's going to be not a good deal or maybe it's not readable as well. So rather, this is more readable and you can write all the chunks within this particular code block. So this is why the explicit weight is kind of very handy. And if you ask me what is the major difference, it's just a readability and it's very, very easy to work with as well. 
So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Chrome browser. I will show you a different website of Exit Automation, which is Exit Automation slash site, where it has some animation on the page so that we can verify if that animation really successes and we can verify if that particular element actually exists. So I'm gonna flip to Chrome browser. And I'm gonna to navigate to Exit Automation instead of block. I'm gonna to go to the site. I'm not sure how many people have really seen this particular website, but this website has a lot of cool things like all the courses, informations, and all those animations and jazz here. So you can see there are so many animations happening. Like there is a slider rolling out, and there is some buttons coming up. Like it shows like how many students have enrolled, and even it has to be updated as well. But you can see like it has so many things happening. So as you can see, every time it scrolls, the image changes. And my quest today is even more specific. Something like I have developed this guy, but I have to see that this particular slider icon that I can see in here, if the slide happens, this particular hole fills up with a white color thing. So what is this animation? Like how do I test this sort of animations? This is a very, very edge case. Not people are gonna be really testing these things at least, but I just want to be more specific in my testing that I want to test this particular uh, box or the round thing, which is filling up with the value. So in order for that to be done, I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna hit this inspect so that I can see what's really happening. So if you can see here, dynamically, this particular class LS nav active will change. Can you see that? It just changes based upon the sliding happens. So if another sliding is gonna happen, the class disappears and this particular class will be rendered here. Similarly, you see, all this rendering is happening for different classes. So basically this particular label is getting different classes during this animation is actually gonna happen. So it's kind of a loop which actually runs every time when you load the page. So now the quest is very, very simple. I have to wait till this particular label has this class lsnav active. Super simple, right? So in order for that to be done, as I said before, I'm just gonna be copying this particular locator. I'm gonna flip to our Visual Studio code IDE. And this is exactly the same code that we were working on our previous video. So I'm just gonna maybe come on this particular piece of code and uncomment this particular piece of code. But as you can see, this is eaapp.somi.com website and this is different website that we are going to be working today. So in order for that to be done, I'm just gonna be writing it block once again. And this time I'm gonna be writing a different test case altogether. So this test case is gonna be like testing EA site with for assertion. And over here, I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing. EA sci of visit of www.executeautomation.com slash site and this guy is basically in HTTP and once I have visited here I need to verify if the particular element actually appears for doing that I'm just gonna do this sci of get and then I'm just gonna paste this particular element and you can see that this element doesn't really work. So, all right, so this is the element that I'm getting. And then I'm just gonna do this. Should have class. And you can see once I hit type the have and if I hit dot, it brings me all the contextual information for the particular have. So you can also use like B, and if you see b dot class something like that there is no such thing here so that's why we have like have dot class it's more readable as well it's more fluent and it's really really readable so we can just use this have dot class as what so what is the value that you're looking for so the values i'm looking for is basically if i just go over here uh it is kind of changing every time so maybe i can just copy paste it over here so I just want to see if this guy is actually coming. So I'm just going to save this. But the thing is, if I save it and if I go to the test runner this time, and maybe if I just run this guy, you can see every time it only runs 
it runs the EA test assertion as well as the login test assertions. Like there are two tests actually running every time. But now my quest is like, I don't really want to run uh, both these eight block every time. I just want to only run this particular test. So I say only this test has to be executed. In order for that to be done in the it block or the it function, we have something called as only in mocha. So if I use this only, if I save this, can you see it only runs this particular testing EA app site alone? This guy testing EA site, rather the login application, it won't work that way, right? Which is really, really cool. And you can see that it is running this particular test, but it is failing. The reason is because if you see the application by itself is pretty slow. I mean, the animation is pretty slow. It brings in here, it waits, waits for some time, but you can see this animation is not leading to the particular stuff and it fails. So that's the reason we are going to be using an explicit waiting mechanism. So for doing that, I can just hit control space. You can see it brings the property like timeout and there are different properties available like timeout and log. So I can just use timeout and I just want to give some random numbers here and I'm going to just save this. And now if I see it actually lowers this particular page. So it waits for the page to be fully loaded. And now it's waiting for the assertion to happen. See, it's currently waiting for us very, very silently. And once it goes to the other page, it got passed, which is really, really cool. So it actually waits, the assertion actually waits for a certain operation to happen, like the default timeout period. And if you want to give a extension time period, you can give an external time period of like this timeout period. So this is how we can verify using the should command. So as I said before, there are many different ways that we can even further enhance this particular code by using what is called as an explicit wait. So in order for explicit wait to happen, I'm just going to copy this code. Maybe just probably like a cheat. So I'm just going to copy, paste it over here. But within this should, I'm just going to call a callback here. So let's call this as dollar $x. And within in here, I'm just gonna call the expect method. So you can see the expect is very, very handy as well because within expect, you can pass the target and then you can perform an action on that. So I'm just gonna pass the target as dollar $x. And then there are many different methods that you have. Like expect to be you can do this as well or to have class something like that or you can do whatever combinations that you want to verify so i just want to do to have class as ls hyphen nav active i can do that and then i can command this code and i can save this so the behavior of this particular code execution is going to be pretty much same like how it happened for the implicit weight in explicit weight also the behavior is pretty much same like it was before you can see the assertion got passed right so if you want to do some other assertions here expect dot to be to not be null or something like that i'm just giving some some examples here so if i just run that you can see it just waits for the page to load and the assertion has got passed because it is not null of course the object still exist there and that's why it is passed so you can do any sort of combination in this place and we are going to be using this expect and should a lot in our course because this is something which is very very important and for sure assertion has to be done in a lot of different places so we'll be using this assertion a lot in this video right so this is how we can do the explicit as well as the implicit assertions using cypress so in our next video, we'll be discussing how to work with hooks.